In this video, we're going to be talking about how to turn a linear combination of sine and cosine with equal arguments into a single cosine function. So first, uh, let's talk about a little bit about what a linear combination is. Uh, it's a fancy word for saying that you are adding together uh, some terms or some functions. Um, and the only thing you're doing before adding them together is multiplying them by a constant. So a linear combination of sine and cosine would be like this. If I have a cosine x plus b sine x. And what I want to do is I want to try to write it as a single cosine function that looks like this. Where the reason this might be useful is because often when you're trying to solve algebraic equations that involve trigonometric functions, uh, having the variable you're trying to solve for in two different places is undesirable. And uh, the ability to compress these into a single function. Um, now, from here, right, if we had this equal to something, we could just divide by c, take the inverse cosine, add d, and then we're done, right? Whereas here, this, this side would be much more difficult to solve. So let's go about figuring out how to do this. Now, to be clear, the goal here is we want to find out what is c and what is d in terms of a and b. So if I am successful at doing this, then at the end, we're going to have C equals some function of A and B, and D equals some function of A and B. So to figure out what this relationship is, I'm actually going to work backward. Uh, I'm going to start with C cosine of X minus D. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to expand this using the uh, difference property, uh, the difference identity for cosine. So I'm going to have, I can pull a C out from the front, and then I'm going to have uh, cosine X cosine d plus sine x sine d. And once I'm here, we're actually like just about done. Uh, from here, what I can do is uh, I'm going to group some of these terms very suggestively. Because uh, I have a cosine x and I have a sine x, and that's kind of where we want to go. So I'm going to write this instead as c cosine d times cosine x plus c uh, sine d sine x. And look, now we have a constant in front of cosine x and a constant in front of sine x. And that's what we have up here, is we have a constant with cosine and a constant with sine. So that means that this is equal to a and this is equal to b. So I'm going to write this explicitly that a equals c times cosine d, and then I'm going to write b equals c times sine d. But this still isn't super useful because this doesn't give me c and d in terms of a and b. Um, instead, <clears throat> I, I have two equations with two unknowns in them. So let's try to get c first, because um, I want to get c by itself in terms of a and b. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to square these both of these equations, and I'm going to add them together. So I'm going to have a squared plus b squared equals c squared cosine squared d plus c squared sine squared d. And once we're here, you might recognize the Pythagorean identity for sine and cosine. So now I can write this as a squared plus b squared equals, and I can factor out my c squared, and I'm left with cosine squared plus sine squared, which is 1. So I just get c squared. That means that c is equal to the square root of a squared plus b squared. So this is my first uh, important equation here. That was a pretty bad box. Uh, but this is my first equation here. Um, what I still need to do, though, is I need to find out what d is. And if I go back here, I'm going to rewrite these uh, two equations a little bit. I'm going to write uh, that cosine d equals a over c. And I'm going to write sine d equals b over c. And we found c, right? So this could I could just write this if I wanted to as a over the square root of a squared plus b squared. And I could do the same thing here. b over the square root of a squared plus b squared. And then if I want to find d, I can just take the inverse sine of the inverse cosine. Of course, what you have to be careful of is because we have two constraints here, right, on what uh, cosine is and what sine is, you have to pay attention to the signs, um, positive or negative. Because if I have cosine d is you know positive and sine d is negative, the only quadrant where that's true is in quadrant 4. So if I'm going to solve for d, it's going to give me a reference angle, but then I have to make sure that I actually go ahead and put it into quadrant 4. 
Okay, so let's see what I'm talking about here by doing an example. Uh, let's look at some real numbers. So let's say uh, I want to do uh, um, this. I want to transform 3 cosine 2x minus 4 sine 2x into a single cosine function. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to get c. So why don't you go ahead, if you pause the video, try to see if you can find out what c is. So c should be uh, the square root of 3 squared plus negative 4 squared. So this is going to be the square root of 25, 9 plus 16, which is 5. Great, we got c. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to write down cosine d is equal to uh, remember for cosine, if you don't remember a or b or anything, it just it, it's the one that goes with cosine. So cosine d is 3 over 5, and sine d equals negative 4 over 5. So based on these two pieces of information, cosine positive, sine negative, this must be uh, whatever angle I have, d, has to be in quadrant 4. Okay. Um, and then we can go ahead and actually take the inverse cosine or the inverse sine. It's not going to matter. Um, whichever one you get, you just need to make sure that you put it into quadrant four. So what I'm going to do is if I take, I'm going to, I'll do cosine. If I take the inverse cosine, so D equals the inverse cosine of the arc cosine of three fifths, that's going to give me uh, 0 0.927. But this is not in quadrant four, it's in quadrant one. So to get this into quadrant four, I'm going to do two pi minus 0 0.927. And that will give me the angle that I actually want, which is 5.356. Okay. So now I can write down my function. So I have that this original thing up here is equal to c, which is 5, times cosine of 2x minus d, which is 5.356. But you know, it, it's kind of traditional to write this in, with nothing in front of the x, so we actually want to pull the 2 out. So let's factor out the 2, um, and that will give us uh, 5 times cosine of 2 times x minus 2.678. And you're done, okay? So that's how you write, um, how you, you can use the linear combination of sine and cosine to compress a cosine multiplied by a constant and a sine multiplied by a constant into a single function. You can use this, as I mentioned earlier, um, to do make algebra a little bit easier. So let's say we have uh, something like, oh, sorry, let me get back up real quick. N notice too that what I did there, right, was we had cosine of 2x and we had sine of 2x. And then when I compressed it into uh, cosine of something, right, c times cosine of uh, x minus d, I did this, I did 2x minus d. Um, because I kept this argument the same as whatever it was in here, and then I factored out the 2. So make sure you do that too. Um, it's very easy to instead try to do cosine of 2x minus d, um, but, but that's not actually what you, what you want to do. Okay. So let's do one more. Let's say uh, I have an equation that I want to solve, which is something I mentioned that could be useful. Let's say I have 2 cosine theta uh, minus 3 sine theta equals 1. I want to solve this. Well, if I want to solve this, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to compress this into a single cosine function, because that's a lot easier to solve than having theta in two separate spots, two separate functions. So c is going to be equal to the square root of 2 squared plus negative 3 squared. So that's going to be uh, the square root of 13, 4 plus 9. And then for d, I'm going to do cosine d equals 2 over root 13 and sine d equals negative 3 over root 13. Once again, this is going to put us in quadrant 4 because our cosine is positive and our sine is negative. Okay. Then we'll take the inverse cosine, we'll make sure it's in the correct quadrant, and this will allow us to then write our uh, actual function as uh, the square root of 13 times cosine of theta minus 303.69 degrees equals 1. Okay, going back up here and just rearranging, you know, using our, our new cosine function to replace our linear combination of sine and cosine. Um, and remember the 303, because if you take the inverse cosine, I think you get like 50, 
uh, 56.3 or something around there. Um, but then you have to make sure you put it into quadrant four, so that gives us 303 degrees, okay? And once you're here, this is just a normal tree equation that you're gonna solve. So now I'm gonna say, okay, well, cosine of theta minus 303.69 degrees equals one over root 13. We take the inverse cosine, um, and you're gonna get that theta um, is equal to, uh, or sorry, we'll do theta minus 303.69 degrees is equal to positive or negative 73.89 degrees plus 360 degrees n. Because remember, a cosine loops around over 360 degrees. Um, so from here, we're going to get two sets of solutions, right? Because I'm going to add 303 to both sides. So I'm going to get one solution over here, one solution over here. So on the left side, uh, we're going to have 377, theta equals 377.58 degrees around plus uh, 360 degrees n. And over here, we're going to have theta equals 229.79 uh, degrees plus 360 degrees n. And then uh, let's say I'm looking for all solutions. I don't know. Let's do, you know, zero but, uh, is less than or equal to theta, which is less than or equal to 360 degrees. So I want to find all solutions um, with one complete cycle around. So if I want those, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, okay, well, over here, 377 is already too big. So I'm going to make n negative 1. So I'm going to do 377 minus 360, and that's going to be my first solution, uh, which is going to be around 18 degrees. And then my second one, I'll make n0, and my second one will be around 230 degrees, okay? So, again, if you want to solve this, right, don't get tricked. Don't try to solve it right away. Um, first, use our linear combination identity um, or you know, method to combine the linear combination of sine and cosine into a single cosine function. And then, once you have that equal to 1, this is a lot easier to solve. Um, you solve this just like you would solve any normal tree equation. So that's um, how you wrap it up and solve it. Okay? So linear combination of sine and cosine, um, make sure you can convert uh, from a linear combination into a single cosine function, and then be sure you're comfortable with solving uh, equations after that. It's a really useful thing that, that comes up a lot in math and physics and, and, and other sciences. Thanks for watching.